Hi guys, I'm Owen of Van Trekking Lifestyle, and we've had this video about how we handle driving our big box RV around in high winds, ready to release for a while. But then we woke up this morning expecting bad weather in Florida, and this tornado had touched down in the panhandle. Our thoughts and prayers go out to friends and subscribers who live in this area, but as you can see, many fellow RVers were impacted by these high winds and this tornado. When you're in an RV traveling as much as we do, you're going to eventually have to deal with this. I'll put a link to a video up above where we checked into a site last year about the same time, just as tornadoes were touching down around us. It goes into what we do to try to stay safe when there's dangerous weather near you and you're in a van or an RV. I almost said small RV, but in fact, one of the fifth wheels completely turned over this morning by that tornado was a huge toy hauler. So no RV is completely safe in tornadoes. So before we show you this video, let me add one more tip about dealing with high winds. Choose being safe over a schedule or the safety of your RV. Let me repeat that. Choose always being safe over a schedule or even the safety of your RV. If there's a tornado down near you, you have to. You have to get to a permanent building on site to be safe. And even though the video that follows is about how we drive in high winds, please just be smart. Stay put. Don't be an RV storm chaser because a big RV and winds above 30 miles an hour, well, they're just not safe. And we urge you to always, always choose to be safe. And even if you're not in a tornado warning area, you're probably going to be driving through some high winds. So find your safest place and stay there. And delay traveling if you can. The day we recorded this video, the winds were bad, but they weren't dangerously bad. If they had been, we would have sought shelter with one of you or in a permanent building nearby. But you know, if you're watching this, like us, you're probably more of a nomad. And there are going to be times when you're traveling when you find that you have to drive in somewhat windy conditions. Whether it's normal Florida storms from a thunderstorm or in the plains when the winds are really whipping. And hopefully these tips that follow and the suggestions in the video can help you make the most of those winds. You just have to travel when it's windy. Should you do it? A big box like this, well, it's going to get blown around. Okay, I'm riding down the interstate in what is actually a big box with six wheels. It's been lifted and it is not the most aerodynamic. We have about a 25 to 30 mile an hour crosswind coming from my passenger side to the driver's side. So I want to show you uh, what it looks like when, when that's happening. So you'll get a feel for can you be okay driving this on a windy day? Look at my steering wheel. I'm having to kind of turn to the right to keep it in the lane and to keep the wind from blowing me sideways, blowing me sideways. And every now and then, see right there, we'll get a gust where it'll just push me over into the third lane instead of the middle lane. So I'm having to do it right now. At this moment, if you look into here, I have lane assist on and it's helping me not get out of this lane, which I often wonder, does that make a difference? So let's turn lane assist off and see if it makes a difference. Over here on the turn signal, you press that button and this green light, lane keeping system's now off. So now let's have a look at driving without lane keeping assistant on. So immediately I can tell from sitting here when we get a gust, I have to be the one to get me back into the middle of the lane. But if you're a passenger, this actually might be more comfortable in this kind of a very windy situation. But from a driver's perspective, I really do like the lane assist keeping technology in the Ford Transit. It's accurate, but it's kind of smooth in the way it handles it and soft. But, okay, I'll turn it on. Let's see a difference. 
and it's back on now. It's as if all the steering adjusts a little bit as well. If I try to go too far or jerk too hard on it, it makes it a softer change in direction, if that makes any sense. Okay, so here are a few things you can do to, uh, to make this kind of travel day better. The first one is obvious. Check the weather. If it seems like it's going to be like this, then maybe just don't go at all. If you have the chance to, uh, to not travel when it's uh, a windy day, then extend your trip where you are and wait on a more calm day. The second way that you can make this better is maybe travel at a different time. In other words, today, around 3 or 4 o'clock, the wind is supposed to lay down some. It would be a much better, more comfortable time to ride and do this. But we want to get to our next destination, so we chose to go ahead and go. The third may be obvious to some, but it's not always. I'm in a 70 mile per hour uh, speed limit, and I've tried to go 70, but it's almost to the point that it's white knuckle at 70 and 72 miles an hour. So I've slowed down to be 67, and that seems to be about the sweet spot. I don't have too many people passing me left and right, and I can stay in the lane more comfortably. Next, the thing you may want to think about is which lane to get in. If there are three lanes, it's probably the safest to get in the middle lane. So we always try to do that anyway if we can because we don't have people trying to merge with us all the time. And I always think of the Jeff Foxworthy thing, I'll merge with you, but when you're in a big vehicle like this, merging, well, you don't want to stop and start and get out of the way and moving over sometimes is a little more difficult. So we try to travel if it's windy, especially if it's windy, we travel in the middle lane. That way, if I get a really big gust, it's going to push me over. At least it's not pushing me off the road, which is actually the most dangerous thing. Some days you just have to travel when it's windy. Should you do it? Well, you know, if you have to, then, then go for it. A big box like this, well, it's going to get blown around. Just be prepared for it. Know what you can do to improve the situation. Slow your speed down. Pick the time of day that you travel and just pay attention. And I know you're gonna say it. <laughs> Maybe not make a video when you're dealing with it. Uh, that should tell you that this kind of situation in the Winnebago Echo doesn't uh, bother me as much as it would in some of the other RVs I may have to, to drive, especially since we've had this suspension package. But if you have suggestions, especially if you're a truck driver, of things we can do to improve the safety while we're rolling down the road in an RV, leave it in the comments down below. I uh, hope you've enjoyed this. If you're thinking about getting a Winnebago Echo, uh, it's a big billboard. We like it, but just know it's a big square billboard box. Not the most aerodynamic thing, and she's going to get blown around. Thanks for watching. One thing to the driving in the wind video uh, suggestions, and that is, if you're going to be in the middle lane, make sure you're going fast enough to not be a deterrent to traffic. If you see that people are passing you on the right-hand side and the left-hand side, you may have to bite the bullet and either speed up or move over. You know, the main thing you want to do is you don't want to wreck because of the wind, and you also don't want to be a deterrent to other people being safe as well. So just keep that in mind.